And you're back listening to The Largest Minority, uh, WBAI's ro- program focusing on news and views of people living with disabilities. And on the phone right now, we are joined by Savannah uh, Logson uh, Breakstone. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I've been skimming yeah. over it. Um, it's good evening. pronounced exactly how it looks. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Logsdon Breakstone. It is great to have you with us, uh, Savannah. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining us tonight. It, it's g- g- great to be on. Um, yeah. Uh, um, uh, and now, um, as I was, as I, as I believe I was saying before, you are, um, an advocate and you are a member of the Autistic Self Advocacy Network, uh, also known as ASAN. Um, and um, you've been involved with a lot of different, uh, uh, especially more recent uh, actions that have that have been going on with the with uh, the autism community. We'll talk a little bit about the vigil and, and so on later on, uh, which we, we've mentioned on previous shows. But tell us a little bit just to start off about about the uh, autistic uh, self advocacy network. Okay. Yeah. Um, so um, ASAN. That's just mm-hmm. you know a quick way to say it. Um, ASAN. Ha- um, was founded back in um, 2006 by um, Ari Namon and um, Scott Robertson, Mm -hmm. um, who are both um, autistic people. Mm -hmm. Um, There was a realization that um, a lot of the uh, messages and images about autism that um, were out there were not really... Um, being geared in a way that was, um, (sighs) sorry, sometimes words just kind of... That's okay. um, You're not alone in that. It wasn't being guided by um, the voices of autistic people. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that, you know, kind of a problem. And... um, So, um, ASAM was founded, Mm -hmm. and um, it's an entirely autistic-run organization. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we focus a lot more on um, adult issues than children issues, Uh but um, we do collaborate sometimes with with allies that agree with um, our views. on making sure that resources are available. So, um, can I just jump in for one quick second? Yeah. Um, now, I just wanted. We, I don't know if you heard my brief conversation with TK, and I believe TK, you're still on the line. I'm still here. Okay, TK is in a kind of a a, 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 a static fog, but he is on the line with us. Um, but we were talking a little bit about the the increased sort of incidence of, or at least the diagnosis of, of autism in the last decade or so. Um, but I wanted to talk, uh, ask you a little bit about the self-advocacy part of it. Um, because, and you're saying that it's mostly adults, which I mean, it makes sense. If you're going to do self-advocacy, it, it's probably going to be more likely that it's going to be folks that are adults. But does that have any, um, I mean, how how does that work for you or how does that uh, self advocacy. Um, what does that mean for you? Um, I'm not sure that I'm like entirely getting, you know, the question, but mm-hmm. um, I can try to answer. Okay. Um, first off, the I'm gonna do a little comment on um, conversation because I was listening earlier. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, first of all, the incident rates. If you actually go in and look at the statistics um, Mm -hmm. on it, it's actually mostly kids that um, before the amount of awareness in practitioners in particular um, and pediatricians of what, how diverse um, autism actually expresses, Uh um, these are kids that um, would have been mislabeled. These are mostly kids that um, have fewer, you know, less extensive support needs. Um, Mm -hmm. I and a lot of adults um, in the autistic community don't really go for the whole high-functioning, low-functioning dichotomy. We feel Uh like it um, creates this this kind of power imbalance that is really 
problematic within the community. Right. So I can imagine. Um, there's that. And you know, I've I've been doing advocacy myself since I was twelve. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I've had a long time to see stuff um, changing over time and like I've seen stuff going from I don't know if you and um, the listeners saw anything about it, but um, in the autistic community, mm-hmm. rather than Awareness mm-hmm. Month, we've been um, celebrating Acceptance Month. Um, a lot of us have you know, a problem with the awareness um, concept because you know a lot of the awareness that gets spread is um, a lot of stereotypes and misrepresentations um, and blue ribbons that people forget what it, you know, actually means after April. Um, And, um, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, there's a lot of stuff that's done in the name of awareness that doesn't really um, include autistic voices in a way Mm -hmm. that's really, um, you know, centers our voices. Right. Well, I think that it's, 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 it's part of what I was trying to get at with the question about self-advocacy, right? Which, and, and it's something that you, that I was reminded of as you were describing the organization, which is the, the slogan, you know, nothing about us without us. Right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's, that, I mean, that is the, the key thing. And I think that it's, um, a thing that we should all be thinking of. And I know that, um, I personally have multiple disabilities. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I know that it informs, all of my disability work, not just, you know, my involvement with ASAN or with the autistic community. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, 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 I think it's so important that we find a way to involve the voices, however they're expressed. I mean, there's mm-hmm. a lot of people that um, might need to use alternative communication methods. Right. Um, mm-hmm. But um, it's so important to include the voices of, you know, the people that it's the topic of mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Well, I think that, so. I think that in the, the, the significance also for the, the autistic self advocacy network is that, um, certain people with a, a different, you know, certain different types of disabilities. And again, mm-hmm. part of it is, it's significant that it's the adults that are doing this. But for, for some groups, uh, there has been traditionally, um, uh, they've been getting representation or they've been, they've been, the, the advocacy that has been done has been done on their behalf by other people who, um, I mean, m- may have the best, may have their best interest in, in, in mind, but may not necessarily, um, um, be, be the, the, be the best representatives for them. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely, de- definitely. And I think that that's, you know, one of the big difficulties that there is, um, mm-hmm. I mean, one of the things that, you know, I personally get excited about is the idea of, you know, the fact that we're gaining allies who get it and get that it, our voices and our, our, you know, the fact that we're, you know, human beings as well. Um, Mm -hmm. And now they're raising young people that are going to be able to have that concept and they're applying that to their parenting so that, you know, the next generation will have a chance to, not have as much shame, I think, mm-hmm. about, you know, being disabled, being autistic, right. um, as I did or as many of my friends did. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that that's also an important thing. You know, I don't want to, like, say that we only do adult stuff, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think you really, um, like, from listening to what you said, I see many parallels between the work that I've done regarding the neuromuscular community and people, you know, fighting against the whole Jerry Lewis MDA organization. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, yeah. you know, I, I, I can't tell you how many times it frustrated me when I hear people say, oh, if we could just raise enough money for your cure, you know, basically parents are saying, my kid is broken. Yes. And, you know, I think that's a terrible yeah. message to give your kid. You know, you're broken, yeah. we have to yeah. fix you. Right. I love you so much, I want you to be somebody else. <laughs> yeah, um, there's, I actually have like two comments. Mm-hmm. Um, 
one of them is that, you know, we've actually taken a lot of inspiration from, um, I believe that it's Jerry's Orphans. Yep. Yeah, um, we've, we've had Mike Irvin on a bunch of times, yeah. Yeah, um, and, and so we take a lot of inspiration from them and from the deaf community mm-hmm. and how they've defined, you know, culture rather mm-hmm. than, you know, um, yeah. yeah, right, so, rather than it being a lack, right. Yeah, and um, the other thing is that, like, we talk about these these images of us being broken or being separate because we're, you know, uh, people with disabilities, um, mm. and, like, Mostly invisible the, disability, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, like, there's this... Um, image that is often um, associated with autism awareness stuff. Um, the puzzle piece. Um, yeah. Are you guys familiar? Yeah, that's the, the that's the big that's the big iconic um, image that I've seen, like you know, in schools and stuff like that about the 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 popular autism aware uh, awareness month or whatever it is. I very much, by the way, very much like. Uh, autism acceptance as opposed to awareness. I think that's a cool thing. But, yeah, the puzzle piece thing, so go ahead. Yeah, um, not, and I mean, there's there's a lot of debate, debate in the community. Some people are like, okay, whatever about it. But there's a lot of us that are really um, uncomfortable with how the puzzle piece is used. And, and the thing is, is that we run into so many people that have great intentions, mm-hmm. but, you know, there's just so much... I'm not sure how to say this. I want to say, like, systemic trauma that happens from, you know, being told that we're broken, and that's just a reminder because a lot of the rhetoric that comes up um, around the use of the puzzle piece is really about this whole broken and being disconnected from the world and from reality, and it just... Mm -hmm. It's so sad and um, traumatizing to hear, you know, people talk about me or, you know, I have um, a friend that I grew up around the corner from who Mm. is non-speaking and to have somebody talk about somebody like my friend um, and say that we're, you know, broken and, and, um, disconnected from the world when, I mean, my friend Steven, he's one of the most compassionate people I know. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it just is really frustrating. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing to me about that puzzle piece thing, and to some extent about any kind of awareness month and that whole thing, is that on the one hand, certainly I guess there's a there's there's some value to to the idea that you want to increase like the public profile, let's say, of of uh, of um, uh, uh, an issue or a cause, but the the puzzle piece in particular reminds me of the uh, whole thing with the Susan Coleman uh, breast cancer thing, um, which was which uh, and it turned out to be there was this big sort of controversy about that where there's uh, there's almost like it becomes this uh, like quasi fashion statement, you know, or a, a logo almost. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. It, yeah, I mean, um, I've run into, um, on Tumblr, sometimes if you go into the autism tag, mm-hmm. there will be pictures of teenagers um, who have gotten puzzle piece tattoos, and, you know, it becomes this, you know, look at how, you know, cool and compassionate I am. I got this piece to remind me of my, you know, my cousin or my brother mm-hmm. or, you know, my niece. And yeah, it's like, a, it's like the AIDS ribbon. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, are you really paying attention to what your brother, cousin, niece, you know, really feels? Mm-hmm. Or are you just wearing it so that you could, you know, show everybody how cool and compassionate you are? Some of my best friends, right? Like yeah. that, that, you know, that old expression. Some of my best friends are disabled, um, yeah. which we, another <laughs> alternate show, another alternate title for the show, by the way. Uh, some of my some of my favorite TV characters are autistic, right? You know, like uh, um, I mean, this is a, this is a, again, this is kind of like this public image thing that you were talking a little bit about. You know that that um, that that there there there's a popular culture idea about what someone who um, you know has, is autistic uh, may be like, and and the reality 
is a huge spectrum that may not, you know, I mean, it's a little bit like, you know, I think we were talking about this on the phone earlier, you know, like, you know, why, why you're say you're manic depressive. Why can't you be more like Robin Williams, you know, yeah, yeah. um, you know, or yeah, whatever. Well, there's, there's a saying that, um, you know, in, in the, the larger autism community, not just the autistic community, mm-hmm. is that if you've met one autistic, you've met one autistic. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's really, that's definitely true. That's definitely true. Um, 